I'm gonna talk in this uh, video about a common problem that uh, some uh, users are experiencing on Cura uh, mainly and as well I discovered it uh, some time ago and it, the problem is with the infill that the infill doesn't uh, reach and attach it to the walls properly as you can see here I discovered when I was making this uh, test for uh, printing uh, wing profiles and it was giving me this problem in, at the beginning of the extrusion of the infill it didn't attach to the to the wall how i tried different settings and so on and i was not able to 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 fix it actually i give it up uh, on this uh, testing so and forget about it for for the moment but on my next project it's quite important that the infill is really well extruded and attached to the to the wall so I come back to this issue and I have tried some different settings and so on in order to find a solution and I more or less think I have found a solution that uh, it can be useful for my next project. And at the end of the video there is uh, some suggestions about how to really uh, print fast infills and uh, strong infills. Not all the infill patterns uh, suffer from this uh, problem uh, uh, as the others. Uh, the ones that uh, are very interesting um, infills for me are the lines infill and geroid. And in this case, both of them suffer from this uh, from this um, bad behavior. So let me show you how I have um, designed this uh, print uh, in order to check a quick check what is the what is the issue and how it can be fixed. You can see here when well it is it, it starts to extrude the infill here and you can see it did not start on the wall. It starts let's say five millimeters away from from the wall and it starts here and then comes up to here and jumps from here to the next point which is here and it happens again the same. It doesn't attach properly to the wall. Okay and travels through here, jumps again here, and again, we find here very, very thin little plastic reaching, reaching the wall. And again, jumps here, and goes all through it. So in every beginning of the uh, line of extrusion of the infill, at the beginning, there is a problem of uh, under extrusion or not uh, extruded enough in order to contact properly the wall as it does at the ends like here. Okay, it happens, like I said, in, this is the lines in feel of Cura, and this is the geroid, which is actually happening the same. You can see here that all the initial parts, it's like non-existent for, let's say, five millimeters or so, depending a little bit, okay? And here, for example, it jumps here, it should start here, make this line, and it's not even a line here, uh, which, is, which is missing, okay? So every... Every start of line, you know, here you can see as well, it's missing parts. So every start of line just not attached to, to the wall. Here you can see it, it's barely touching the touching the wall. Okay, so that's that's a problem because the infill needs to give uh, rigidity to the walls. If it doesn't, you know, the structure is not uh, strong enough. This is a quite common problem when uh, building sandwich panels if the infill is attached from the walls, actually the part it's very, uh, it's like uh, just very flimsy and it will not support all the demands that we need. I have to say that um, this uh, bad behavior, it's uh, independent of the material. It happens with uh, PLA, ABS, PHG, nylon, uh, etc. It's not material dependent, this, this behavior. As well, uh, during the test, I have been doing uh, a lot of tests, uh, changing the width of the infill, changing the flow, changing the speed, and some other um, different parameters like the random start of the infill and some other things. And obviously, I have get uh, some results on on doing that. Um, so the best uh, results are if we uh, increase the width of the of the infill. Okay, uh, we increase the flow of the infill and we reduce dramatically the speed 
of the infill. Okay, so here is a test where almost all the lines are perfectly attached. There is uh, some minor uh, issues with that. So all the lines are uh, perfectly attached, almost perfectly attached to the wall. So this could be a solution, but the problem with this is that I had to reduce the speed of the infill down to the speed of the outside. So the uh, time of printing goes over double when uh, printing this way, because the infill usually is printed uh, at least at the top speed or even higher than that. So you, the problem with this uh, setup is that, uh, well, I'm looking for a quite fast infill print, which are, uh, like I said, the lines and the gy gyro, which are the fastest on printing. But then if we have to, you have to reduce the speed of the printing of this, we uh, get no uh, solution for this. So uh, to reduce the dramatically speed is not a solution for me. It's not what I, what I was looking for. I was looking for a more permanent solution as well. Um, so the best solution then was to do this uh, parameter that you can change on the, on the infills that is connect line infill lines okay on cura okay if you connect infill lines instead of printing one line then another one then another one what it does it starts here print this one then jumps then goes through here printing basically through uh, like another you can see here like another wall here and then jumps here then here then jumps goes all the making it one completely full line all in, in one row. Okay, so now what we have only, it's only one starting point, which is this one. You can see here the problem that I commented that the first like five millimeters is not, <clears throat> not connected to the outside and not extruded, but all the rest, as you can see, there is no problem with it. And this setup, it's uh, done with the standard speed. So there's no problem now here of the speed on the other one. This is this in field with the connect in lines is slightly slower than uh, just the lines in field, but uh, it's still reasonable high speed uh, in field. Okay. I still um, keep on uh, researching of how to solve it and even not have this here. So uh, reading in, in some uh, posts, in some forums, they say that this problem doesn't happen on uh, Prusa Slicer. So I uh, check it Prusa Slicer to see if uh, this problem was uh, the same or not. But before we start with uh, the Prusa Slicer test, I want to clarify a couple of things. Um, in Cura, uh, there is one profile which is called ZigZag. Uh, zigzag is uh, the same as this profile, which is called lines with connect infill. So lines with connect infill and zigzag actually produce the same result. Okay, I uh, just want to clarify that. And another point, I want to clarify which is called this um, profile of uh, infill in, in Cura is called lines, but in Prusa Slicer it is called rectilinear. But so uh, just bear in mind that rectilinear and is for Prusa Slicer and lines is for um, Cura. In Prusa Slicer or Slicer, there is, uh, like I said before, it's this kind of pattern is called uh, rectilinear. And uh, as you may suppose, it looks like it doesn't have the problem. Okay, because it looks or thing, but actually it has exactly the same problem. If you can see here, there is no uh, connecting lines here, and it jumps here. Uh, so, but the thing is that Slicer they have been very clever, as they probably know this this problem exists that the lines do not connect directly perfectly to the walls. What they did, all their infills are connected. They have connect in line. Okay, so all the infill profiles are connected through the walls. Like you can see here, it's adding this uh, sort of wall here to the to the infill. So uh, obviously 
the solution they found out is the same that, as I found out in Cura, just connect in thin lines. And they went so, so all the, the infill patterns are with connect infills. So if you go directly to Prusa slicer or to a slicer, you don't have to change any settings because it will do it properly and you will only find the problem in just one point of the printing, not all around the printing. Okay, the same for uh, Geroid. If you imprint Geroid, you will only find that problem in one point, which in this case is here, which is missing the, the lines here and so it. Okay, so maybe you can see it here better. In order to fix this problem, uh, I just uh, arrived it to the same solution as a Slicer and Prusa, which is to connect infill lines if I'm using Cura or if I'm using Slicer, then to just leave it like it is because uh, their uh, setup is always uh, connect infill lines for all the all the infills. Okay, but a permanent solution uh, can be given if um, every time that the head jumps to a starting infill line, it does a prime of uh, material, like uh, it does when it uh, retracts. Okay, when it retracts and the head moves from one point to another, uh, there is always some oozing and loosening of pressure. So there is a setup where you can, uh, before starting to the print it, it will prime a little bit of plastic in order to create that pressure, and there is no problem or like this on the on the on on the printing. So that could be a permanent solution, and it, it will be possible to use um, this kind of uh, infills with no connecting walls, which will make much thinner walls, less use of material and probably a bit less of time of printing. But this last thing I'm not really sure because anyway, have the head have to travel all the, all the paths anyway. Okay, here are some tips about how to print uh, the infill uh, fast and strong. And these are the three kinds of uh, infills you can find on Cura and, Pru and Prusa Slicer uh, that print fastest. The fastest to print is this one, which is uh, called Lines in Prusa Slicer. Only you can find it on Prusa Slicer, not in Cura or a Slicer. This is the second one, which is called Lines in Cura and Rectilinear in Prusa Slicer or a Slicer. And the, the slowest one is uh, Geroid uh, that you can find on, on both. Okay, all the three prints really, really fast. Okay, uh, which is the strongest? Uh, it may depend on, on your needs. Okay, if you need a part that it's very strong in one direction, which is this is the one to choose because it's very strong on the C direction. So if you um, orientate the part on proper way, you will find a very strong part on this direction. Okay, it's and as you can see, it's not so strong on the other direction because it, it flexes. Okay. If you need a very strong part and very a stiff part on all directions, this is the one to choose because it's very strong on C axis, okay, in this way. And as well, it's very strong on this direction in this direction. And if you need a, as well a strong part, but slightly flexible, that for example, will stand impacts and vibration, this is the one to choose because uh, the lines of the infill are cool, will let the walls to move a little bit without breaking the infill, as you can see here, because all the lines flexes in one way or the other. This way it flexes a little bit as well. So if you need a stiff part, okay, in all directions, this is the one to choose. If you need a very stiff part in one direction, this is the one to choose. And if you need a slightly flexible part that will resist impacts and so on, this is the right one to, to choose. Um, these are just my, my opinions and I think my, my suggestions. Hope you have uh, liked this video. Uh, I put the link of a CNC kitchen video uh, that explains uh, about some more different uh, kind of uh, infill patterns that it's very well made and hope that uh, you like it.